Hello everyone, this is Magda Castaneda from Utopia Health Career Center and I am a certified nephrology nurse and I am here today with another short video class and this class is called How to Know If You Have Kidney Disease, okay? So how would you know? So this is going to be a short class. It's going to be fast. I am going to share my screen. So hopefully, this is the first time I do it like this. So hopefully, um, you're going to be able to see me and see my, my screen. But what we're going to be talking about today is how to know that you have kidney disease, okay? So I am going to, let me just move something real quick in here. Let me make sure. Okay, so let me make sure that everyone is hearing me. Hi everyone again, my name is Magda Castaneda from Utopia Health Career Center. I'm a certified nephrology nurse and today I'm gonna talk about how do you, how would you know how to know that you have kidney disease so that's going to be the class for today and i am trying to do something that i have not done before and that is sharing my screen okay so i'm going to try to share my screen and share and you know keep myself on the camera so bear with me for a minute because i want to close out my camera a little bit more I want to close out the there we go okay here we go okay so I think I'm good here let me just move myself a little bit to the side and here we go okay so hi Veronica Veronica is giving me a thumbs up so if you are here you're watching me if you want to say hi um, Sharon Paz is giving me a thumbs up so thank you so much for watching and let's go ahead and start with the this is going to be a short short class real fast okay so I am going to go ahead and share give me one minute okay so now this is what we're going to do okay so I'm going to be talking about how to know if you have kidney disease and how to slow down the process which is super important so with your re the renal anatomy what most people have the normal renal anatomy is that we have two kidneys and they are about the size of a fist and they weigh about five ounces each of them so if you do a fist like this okay so everyone do, do a fist like this and look at it that's the size of your kidney okay that's the size of your kidney if you do two fists these are the sizes of your kidneys and they're located in the back of the body like around this area so they're like around this area over here so I hope everyone can see around here okay so they are protected by pads of fat and the rib cage and they have millions and millions of nephrons and nephrons are going to be the cells inside of the kidneys there are two different types of kidney disease. One is called acute kidney failure, which is AKF. We recognize it as that. And the other one is chronic kidney disease, which is CKD. Okay, so acute kidney failure could be due to an accident, trauma, or a person that had a drug overdose, uh, medicine, stuff like that. In acute kidney failure, it could be reversible, so the person could have kidney function again. Now, in chronic kidney disease, is a slow loss of nephrons of the kidney cells, okay? So it's gradually, the kidney function will go down and down and down, and unfortunately, that one is non-reversible, okay? So once we lose nephrons, those are, that's it. Those are lost we cannot regenerate new cells in our kidneys, okay? The initial screening for CKD, so how can you know, you know, if you have kidney disease or not, you can ask your doctor. You can ask the, your doctor for a simple screening. It's very simple. The screening is a urine test, a simple urine test, and a blood pressure check. Those two things can give you like an idea if you have some type of kidney failure or if you are at risk 
for kidney failure, okay? So when you go to your doctor, just ask for a urine test and a blood pressure check, and that's going to be the initial screening. If something comes out out of range, then the doctor is going to perform more testing, more testing. Another very common test that the doctors perform is the creatinine. Let's see how the creatinine is, okay? So let's talk about the stages of CKD or chronic kidney disease. So when a person is already diagnosed with chronic kidney disease, then it is said that there are five stages, okay? It goes from one to five. And these stages are gonna be determined by the GFR or structural abnormalities of the kidneys. And what is this? Let me translate this for you. So GFR is going to be the glomerular filtration rate. And that tells us how good your, your kidney is functioning, is the percentage. So we should all have 100%. If we have 100%, it means that our kidneys are working well, good filtration, we're eliminating water or fluid well, okay? So if we don't have 100%, if we have something lower, then we go into the stages of chronic kidney disease. So just to kind of elaborate a little bit more on that, let me discuss this table. Okay, so on the first stage, which is the first one, the first line, or probably the, the first line is the description line, and then the second line, that one is the stage. So it says stage one, and in description it says kidney damage with normal or higher GFR. And again, the GFR is how well the, the kidney is filtering. So in this case, there's not much to do. The person could have a stage one because they have, for example, one kidney or the structure of the kidney is not normal. There are some scars in the kidney, some abnormalities. In that case, this person is to be, uh, you know, it's said that this person is on stage one, okay? On stage two, if you look at the GFR, the GFR is going down. Now the GFR is from 60 to 89, okay? This means that this person is on stage two. Stage three, the GFR is between 30 and 59. So now things, symptoms are getting um, a little stronger here. Visible symptoms, this, this person is gonna have visible symptoms and um, we're gonna have to start treating this person. Uh, stage four, there is going to be a severe drop in GFR. The GFR is gonna be between 15 and 29, okay? And again, GFR is how well the kidneys are filtering. This means that this person doesn't have a good filtration. So remember, the GFR that we want is 100. In this case, in stage four, we have a person with a GFR of between 15 and 29. So this is, this is already, you know, we have to do something. In stage five, it's called the end-stage renal disease. This person has kidney failure. There's, you know, no going back, and the GFR for this person is less than 15. So we have to start something. We have to start dialysis, or we have to give this person a transplant, okay? So part of the um, symptoms that this person is gonna have, this person may have anemia, fatigue, um, uh, building up fluid, all those things. And we notice like if you your legs are very swollen and stuff like that, just make sure that your, that your doctor is testing you for kidney failure. So in the lab results, when the doctor, just look at your last lab results and look for the one that says EGFR, okay? So the E is for estimated and then GFR is for glomerular filtration rate. What that means is how your kidneys are working, the kidney function, okay? 
So normally in your lab results, you will see something like greater than 60. So if you see greater than 60, don't get scared or anything because I know I mentioned it has to be 100, but for the lab results, normally the general lab results that you're gonna get is either greater than 60 or lower than 60, okay? So if it's greater than 60, it means that you're good. No kidney failure. If it's lower than 60% for three months, then you have kidney failure, okay? So look at the lab, uh, the last lab results that you, that you had. Now, for example, if it's greater than 60%, but you're having some symptoms, like you're getting swollen, um, building up fluid, uh, high blood pressure, all those things, then the doctor is going to go deep into testing, do other testings that are going to tell him if you really, you know, if you, if there's something that we should be worry, if, uh, worried about your kidneys, okay? But on your lab results, this is what you're going to see, either greater than 60 or lower than 60, okay? Okay, so the symptoms, what type of symptoms you may have if you have kidney failure. You, when your kidneys are not working, there's gonna be a buildup of waste, and this is called uremia, okay? And in, in um, very simple words, people understand this best if we tell them this is urine in the blood, okay? because it's something similar to that. It's almost like if you had urine in your blood, okay? So what are you gonna have? You're gonna have swelling of your feet, hands and face, trouble breathe, uh, breathing because there's gonna be an accumulation of fluid. It's gonna, they, the fluid accumulates everywhere in the soft tissue inside of the lungs. The person may be making more or less urine and maybe during the night, which is called nocturia. During the night, this person may go to the bathroom several times and it's because it's when the, the body is laying down and the kidneys, the circulation starts concentrating in the kidney area and there is uh, like a, the, the kidneys are trying to catch up for what they haven't done during the entire day. So that's why normally people that have CKD or chronic kidney disease, they present lots of nocturia. Um, another thing is foamy or bubbly urine. Okay, so when, when you go to the bathroom, if it's a, very foamy, now don't start looking at the toilet and say, Magda told me that if I have foam, I have kidney failure. No, no. The foam is gonna be a lot. Like, just imagine when you are serving a beer in a glass that has a lot, lot of foam. It's like a lot of foam, okay? Not just the little bubbles, it's a lot of foam. Um, and that is because there are there's protein in the urine and we should not have protein in the urine, okay? So when we have protein in the urine and we uh, urinate, we look at the toilet and you're gonna see all that foam. Okay, so the person may have severe itching, also ammonia breath, or the metal taste, nausea, avoidance of protein food. This person may not be wanting to eat protein food. But one of the things that I wanted to point out that is very interesting and is one of the first signs of kidney failure is the ammonia breath. It's almost like you can smell urine through the breath of this person, okay? I've had, I've, you know, I've, I've had, I've had a person that I knew that I didn't know that this person had kidney failure, but I smelled it, okay? I could, I catched on the smell and I asked this person, have you tested your, your kidneys? Like, have you gone to the doctor and have you tested the kidney? And this person told me, oh my God, I went to my doctor and he said that there was something wrong with my lab results and I was referred to a nephrologist. The nephrologist is the kidney doctor, okay? And I said to the person, can I see your lab results? And she said, of course, and she gave me the lab results. And sure enough, when I looked at the GFR, the GFR was 40, okay? So she was already in the CKD stages. She was 40, so that was stage um, three, 
okay? So that's how I knew. She never told me. She didn't tell me that she had problems with the kidneys or all that, but I smelled it. Okay, so the person can have yellow skin. This person may have some trouble sleeping or sexual problems, and this is due to the uremia, the buildup of waste in the body, okay? Another thing that this person can present is pain around the kidneys, and this pain around the kidneys is because the kidneys get swollen, and that causes pain. The tissues around the kidney also get a little swollen, and this causes pain. So those are the symptoms. So how to slow down CKD. So let's say you know a person that has been diagnosed with chronic kidney disease or the doctor has told you that you have chronic kidney disease. What do you do? How do you slow down the process? We are able to slow down the process, but it takes a lot of, of you, right, of the person that has been diagnosed. So in this case, if you are diabetic, keep the blood sugar in target. Okay, because if you have spikes of blood sugar, that sugar is going to clog the little veins that go to the, your kidney. And once they're clogged, there is very difficult to declog them. Okay, so keep your blood sugar in target. Keep your blood pressure in target. So if you have been told that you have chronic kidney disease, you really have to manage your blood pressure. Okay, with higher blood pressures, you can damage the, the vessels that go to your kidney and you're just going to progress the, the disease. Avoid pain pills called NSAIDs. Those are the non-steroidal anti-inflammatories and these are going to be, for example, naproxen and ibuprofen. And I know that many people say, oh my God, I take that for, for um, my PMS, the premenstrual um, syndrome. And yes, now a normal person, a normal person with good kidneys, this is not going to affect you because your kidneys are well and they're able to filter these medicine, this, this medication out. But don't abuse it, okay? Because these type of medication, the NSAIDs medications, these are very toxic to the kidney. So don't abuse them. If you have been told that you have kidney disease, then don't use them at all, okay? Don't use them at all. And these are the ones that you buy over the counter. Rather talk with your doctor and explain to your doctor that you have been diagnosed with um, chronic kidney disease and see if there's something else that is not a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory, okay? Um, medicine. So quit smoking. If you're, sm if you're a smoker, you gotta quit smoke smoking. This is gonna help you slow down the loss of the kidney function. And then be very careful with the x-rays and dye test, the contrast. If you are going to have a test done and you need the contrast and you have been told that you have kidney disease, you have to make them aware. You gotta tell them that you have kidney disease. I have seen too many people, too many patients that were on stage three and they have been pushed to stage five because they uh, took a contrast during a test. So you got to tell them that you have kidney disease. The contrast, when you have kidney disease, the contrast is very, very toxic to the kidneys. And if, it, if you don't have kidney disease and it's like a normal test, what I recommend is that you drink plenty of water before your test. The day before your test, you drink plenty of water. This is a lot of water, okay? Like a gallon of water during that day. When you go to your test, they will give you saline. They will give you fluid first, right? And then after that, they will give you the contrast. Once, once you're done with your testing, when you go home or in your way home, you got to start drinking more water because now you want to flush it out. So drink another gallon of water, okay? So that's very important. Before, hydrate a lot before and hydrate a lot after. This will help your body just flush out that contrast, okay? So let's see. If you have any questions, and I hope and I hope you liked it. This is this was a short class, as I said, but I wanted to come uh, on here because I said I was going to try to do some classes in a weekly basis, and um, I hope this was helpful. Helpful. If you have any questions, 
just send us an email to info at utopiahcc.com. And I'm going to open right now. Let me just uh, lower my screen here. Hold on for a minute. I just want to make sure that, let me see. Let me go up here. Okay, so here we go. I just want to make sure that, um, yeah, I have, I had um, Veronica, I had Sharon, I had uh, G. Santosh Kumar. Hopefully I'm pronouncing that well. Um, let me see. GFR, okay, so there was a question. Santosh says that what what is the GFR meaning? Yes, GFR means glomerular filtration rate. And a translation for that is the how your kidneys filter, okay? How your kidneys filter. How what's the kidney function that you have? So that's how we measure the kidney function. We measure it with the GFR, glomerular filtration rate. Each one of our cells, of our kidney cells, the nephrons, have a glomerulus. Okay, so it's that's part of our kidney cells. Uh, hope hope that was clear. If you need some more clarification, just let me know. Okay, let me see. Uh, Veronica is grateful because this class is in English, and it helps her, and it helps um, to keep learning the English and practicing the English and I have Annette Feliciano also so I thank you all for watching I hope this um, class short class and very simple was helpful just go ahead and share this if you will give me some likes give me some hearts but share this this could be useful for somebody somebody may be going through this process and needs some type of clarification Go ahead and share this video, and I hope you can use it uh, if you hear about somebody going through this process. So that's it for today. If you have any questions, again, you can send them to info at utopiahcc.com, and we will be happy to help you. Okay? So bye-bye. It'll be until the next one. Bye.